I, I, I really enjoy following your blog, is that when it comes to fashion, or whatever you call it, what I wear, <laughs> I'm, I'm, always, I'm always very self-conscious. Like, I always think, okay, if I wear this, does it say this about me? And, uh, you know, even if it's t-shirt and jeans, like, am I making some kind of statement? And what I like about what I think your approach to fashion is, you're not worried about what other people are thinking. You choose to wear different things because, well, maybe you're taking on a certain mood at the time, or you're feeling something, or you're taking on a certain character. Is that, is that accurate, or are you worried like the rest of us about what? No, that's pretty much it. It's, um, I just, like, I'm a really lazy person, and I, um, just wearing an outfit every day that I kind of have fun putting together uh, makes me feel like I'm doing something creative. Okay. Um, to, I mean, it's, like, I just started high school this year, and um, it's, harder to maintain that I don't care what people think thing but like like today I was walking home from school and I was wearing uh, a blue wig that I took off because it's hot but um <laughs> <laughs> and these kids drove by and they rolled down their window and they were like nice hair and but it was kind of good fuel Did you say stylerookie.com <laughs> I think I smiled at them, but I was also like angry walking through the snow. But um, but it's kind of really good fuel when people uh, are kind of challenge you because I think that I don't know if. Well, what are they wearing? Are they wearing Abercrombie and Fitch? I don't. I, they were in a car, but yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's good for creativity though when you feel like you're confusing people. This, this might sound creepy, but what, what do high school kids wear these days? Um, um, that's not creepy, uh, I don't think. Um, well, when I grew up, I'll tell you why. Because when I grew up in the, in the you know, 80s, 90s, people they just wore these big, baggy... Like, I, my wife tells me that she wore this Benetton sweater that was like nine times too big for her. And then you get this cliche now that everybody is wearing thongs. So what is, what is the... I don't really know how many of my classmates are wearing thongs, but um, I, my school is really big, so there's kind of like, like a variety of people, but um, I think a lot of Urban Outfitters right now. Okay. What do you like to wear to, to school? Do you uh, wear the same things to school that you would put on the site? Yeah, there, I don't um, really dress up for it. It's whatever I have on that day. Um, so yeah. Do you ever have like nightmares that all of a sudden you go to a school that has a uniform? Um, <laughs> sometimes, well sometimes I have dreams where I'm in the movie The Craft, which is similar, <laughs> but then it's not a nightmare. <laughs> so I mean, take us, if you will, and I'm sure you've told this story a thousand times, but you were 11 years old. How did you get started? Why did you just say, I want to I wanna start this, this blog? And when did you know that, hey, people are, are reading it? Um, well, my friend's older sister had a blog, and I admired her, like, cool older girl in high school. Whoa. And um, I, she kind of told me about a few blogs that she read and different fashion magazines she liked. And I just... I was bored with how I dressed, and I saw it as a creative outlet, and um, also the fashion blogging community. This was before, like, newspapers wrote about it, mm -hmm. and um, before bloggers were front row or anything, so um, it was uh, really tight-knit, and that appealed to me a lot because I'd, like, be at the dinner table and talk about something like, I don't know, a magazine spread, and it was I needed a somewhere else for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One of the things that, I don't know whether it, it, it bugs me or not, but when I was reading about you, people would inevitably call you a blogging prodigy. And I thought, you know, that's a, that's a dumb word because I was looking back at some of your, your older stuff, and not that it wasn't, it wasn't good, but I can see your, 
your growth, your maturity as a writer, as a thinker, which is inevitable as you, as you get older, have you seen yourself or have you felt yourself getting better as a blogger, as a writer, more confident? Uh, maybe better, not necessarily more confident, but um, I think that's kind of helpful because then I um, have more motivation in a way. Hopefully. As you get more attention, you know, you, when you first started, nobody's inviting you to Fashion Week, and mm -hmm. now, you, now you are. Is it as easy for you to maintain the kind of initial, not, not necessarily outsider status, but the initial enthusiasm and innocence, if you will, about fashion? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> a kind of, well, like, Kathy Horan is, uh, she um, is the fashion writer for the New York Times, and she had a list of her favorite fashion moments of 2010. And the top one was um, seeing me at the couture shows in Paris and how, and she kind of like described these stares that these elderly rich Italian ladies were giving me and I was like, I hadn't noticed. Um, so I guess, and um, I mean it's harder to like maintain that like not noticing but in a way, it's also nicer to be aware of it because then you don't think everyone is nice and you don't think it, it's all going well and that you can trust everyone. That's really vague. It makes no, sense no, in I my mean, head. Well, one thing that in the, at first drove me crazy reading, again, stories about you was that there are people out there who criticize you and what you do. And then I thought, well, come on. You know, that's, you don't criticize a, a, some, a 14 year old who's, you know, trying to really do something unique and special. On the other hand, if you're gonna be treated like, you know, if you're gonna be treated as a top fashion blogger, well then the world is a, is a cruel place. How do you feel about criticism or do you, because I, when I get, um, you know, it just seems like that's something that anybody gets hurt by. I can't imagine what a, what a 14 year old would be like or do you, can you ignore it? Um, I usually don't look at it, but I think it comes with the territory and I'm playing an adult game, so I understand that uh, people aren't going to necessarily critique me and be nice and sugarcoat it, um, which is fine. But I think that I usually don't read stuff. Um, if I come across it, I just like keep scrolling because even if it's positive, it changes the way you think mm -hmm. and you kind of become more aware that there's another set of eyes. And I think that you have to become, one thing I've adjusted to is that you become like, um, you act as the symbol for people. So like a, kind, like a kind of scapegoat or something they can fictionalize. And it got to a point where I was like, I don't know that I am, that I have like, the strength in me or that I'm like as powerful a force that I can be the reason why this person hates their job and why our generation is doomed and why this person <laughs> hates the end. Like, I just don't, I'm not that strong a person. Mm -hmm. So um, I, do, and I kind of believe that you can do whatever you want to make yourself happy as long as you're not mean or hurting other people and I, don't believe in apologizing for what doesn't actually sincerely hurt people. So if it's valid criticism, I'm happy to listen, but if it's angry internet typing, then I <laughs> don't look at it. <laughs> Do you have, uh, who are some of your, your heroes, whether they're from the fashion world or another world or from the, or, or fictional even? Do you have people who you say, these are, God, they, these, these are people that I admire or, or love what they do, not, ne not necessarily want to be them, but, right. but just love the way they go about things? Yeah, um, I'll just name a few. Like, Rei Kawakubo mm. is my favorite designer, and she also um, is like this secluded, antisocial um, woman who, like she never does interviews and her, she, and people are always, cause her clothes are very bizarre and especially when she started showing um, in 
Paris in the 80s, there was a lot of anger because her clothes had holes in them. And um, she, her thing has always been like, I don't have to explain myself to you, and I admire that. Um, and I like uh, Courtney Love a lot because um, uh, she's cool. <laughs> I don't know. But one thing's right, I mean, like, Courtney Love is somebody who you know, when I was in college, that's when she was really, was really big. And you have got a great, you've got a great kind of historical, you're not just in the here and now, you've got a great depth of knowledge about what has come before, which is unusual, I think, for a lot of people in their, in their <coughs> teens. Are there decades that you find that you particularly love, you loved what went on during a certain time? Uh, the 60s and the... 90s are probably my favorites. Really, and then the, the 20s. so the 90s were a good were a good time. I well, I obviously my ideas I are kind of romanticized. Yeah. So I'm like looking at Buffy. You should and have the seen craft. my dorm room. <laughs> You'd have a whole different idea of the 90s. <laughs> um, I spilled Prell once in a drawer, and it stayed there the whole year. It's not that different from the way I keep my room. I'm really <laughs> sloppy. But, um, but I don't think it's that unique for, like, I mean, because we have the internet. Like, there's yeah. a lot of, like, how could someone so young know about whatever? And it's like, well, there would have to be some type of tool available to people with a computer <laughs> where you can search things and, I don't know. <laughs> All right, good point, good point. <laughs> That wasn't a stab at you, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot, I gotta congratulate you, and I, I guess it's kind of a little bit older news, but you've got a magazine in the works with Jane Pratt. The yeah. Sassy. What, uh, what, what, did, uh, what did Sassy bring to the table, and what do teen magazines now don't do that they should be doing? Okay. Um, well, the thing with Sassy, I... Sassy, I've seen issues of Sassy. I haven't seen old issues of Seventeen or what have you, but the ones I have, or the one when I've read about Sassy, they, <coughs> Seventeen was described as being either um, advice from your parents or advice from boys, mm -hmm. and Sassy was about like what girls themselves wanted. Um, I think now, when it comes to teen magazines, um, I mean, they're they've improved a lot since then, and there are components of Sassy that you see in like 17, like now they have options for different body types and stuff. But um, I think a really important thing is that um, like body image is still such an issue. And I read somewhere the other day, like it was somewhere in the mid 90s, and it was like, <laughs> Oh, now I can't remember the numbers, so I'm going to sound stupid, but it was like however many, however, whatever percent of teenage girls thought they were overweight, and now it's like it had doubled. Or, see, this sounds stupid because I don't know the numbers, but it, I, I don't know, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. yeah, and like now, especially with the internet, there's so much more bullying and um, general self-esteem things that, like, even though, you know, um, issues have gotten a lot better since the time of Sassy, there's, like, like the internet brings a whole other slew of problems and stuff, like, the body image thing has, I think, become a lot worse because of the technology now, and, yeah. So you've received hundreds thousands. of submissions, <laughs> thousands. Yeah. So you've just been spending your time. Yeah, you, that's you, the other thing I did in my what do you What are you looking for? I mean, I didn't want to like have strict criteria because mm. people have been really like, oh, I didn't think I would really care about that or yeah. something. Um, but yeah, it, okay. there's been a, l it's really inspiring. And it's nice to also hear directly from people what they would like to read about, mm -hmm. so. Cool. Well, lastly, I, I don't know what, what you can do with this. I don't know if you can make things happen for me, but I'd like to give you a gift. It's a brand new interview show t-shirt. Yes. So, uh, for the rest of you, there are $15 outside. So 
here you go. Thank you very much. I think much. that fits. If not, let me know. I'm sure it's fine. Thank right. you. Everybody, Tavi, everyone. Thanks. Thank you very much.